So hey, this is the Man Fuse Podcast. I am Kay Lee, audio producer, voice artist, sitting here with my co-host, Ben H., a real estate broker. Today on the Man Fuse Podcast, we're going to talk about a new TikTok trend the FDA is saying is dangerous, and it's right up there with the Tide Pod Challenge. We're also going to get into how I handled the news that somebody that I used to grow up with had passed away. Was I wrong for feeling the way that I felt? Or should I have handled it differently? And the debate about whether penis size matters to females. And here's a question. If you have a party at your house and stuff gets broken, do you expect the people that broke it? to offer to pay for it? This happened to me. We'll get into that in just a few minutes. If you have any drama going on in your life and you want advice from Manfused, you can hit us up at manfused.com or or you can join the show by calling us at 770-744-5227. Okay, we got to talk about this sleepy chicken. It's a trend that the FDA is warning could be dangerous. I mean, who thought of this garbage? I mean, it's like... I remember being bored when I was like a teenager and a kid. Did you do the Tide Pod Challenge? No, no, not. That's what I'm saying. Kids these days, they're so much weirder than we were. Are they, though? Dude. Are they? I mean, me and Gary used to like, we would challenge ourselves to make pancakes and mac and cheese and like make regular stuff. It was a challenge just if we could make something good. You know what I mean? That was the thing. Hey, instead of olive oil... Let's use Benadryl and see what happens. So, but here's the thing, Ben. When I think back, did you never like, I'm going to call myself out here. Did you never like huff cleaner, like in a rag? Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. There's all that kind of weird shit. Did you ever smoke shit. a bowl of seeds? Sure, absolutely. When you ran yeah, out? Did you ever like do that. whippets? Uh, not really. Okay. But, but I know you what are, you're talking You know about. what I'm talking yeah, about. yeah, yeah. So it's the same shit, isn't it? I don't know, bro. Cooking chicken in NyQuil is kind of a different twist. In the urban community, when they say that they're sipping on some perp, isn't that like a NyQuil or some type of like medicine, uh, cough medicine? Right. So it's like sipping on that lean. Right. So they're doing the same thing as basically NyQuil chicken, ain't they? These people are cooking chicken. Sleepy chicken. Now you Eat are some a, chicken, you go are to bed. a fantastic night, night. cook. Yeah. You could be on a cooking show. That's right. So you could probably whip up some sleepy chicken. Dude, if I made NyQuil chicken, first of all, I don't know how I would even make it taste good. The taste of NyQuil is kind of minty. So maybe we'd go with like a Mediterranean marinade, like a Mediterranean NyQuil marinade, and then do like some... Uh, tzatziki sauce on the side yeah i mean maybe well, maybe we'd do lamb I lamb noticed, and mint goes together i did notice in the tiktok video yeah. of these idiots cooking yeah. chicken in nyquil right. well first off he was flipping them over with a pair of pliers i right. don't know where his tongs were you could tell this guy's not chef boy rd this guy's not bobby flay no notice he was using the green and not the red because you know how gross the red is i mean dude i, I just can't imagine how horrible this would taste, not to mention how bad it is for you. It's got to be horrible. They're dumping like two thirds of the bottle in the pan. Now that's and like basting the chicken in it. That's some sleepy it's chicken. Dude. Dude. Sleepy, so chicken. gross. So yeah, that's your uh, kid warning. And watch your kids. I don't know that they're any crazier. They're just doing stuff on video for the whole world to see. And if that's the case, it certainly is working. But is it different? The thing that's different, I think, is that with social media and just the megaphone that you have these days to just post something online and have the potentiality of it going viral in the whole world and the whole world seeing it or talking about it could, which is what we're doing right now. You do. Yeah, exactly. So from that perspective, it works. But what a weird thing. I mean, this is just weird. Very weird and dangerous. Absolutely. You don't recommend NyQuil chicken. No. So I'm kind of conflicted, Ben. I, to give you some backstory, yeah, I don't think I handled something the way I should have in my heart. Join the club. No, I wasn't. I didn't do anything immoral. I didn't do anything unethical. Right. But I viewed somebody who died recently, Mm. took the news of someone's death. Yeah. Processed it. Right. And I basically reacted like they had already been dead. Does that make sense? Yeah, you just kind of let it flow off of you like the beads of water flow off of the back of a duck. Correct. I was the duck. You were the duck. The news was the water. 
it rolled right off of your back. Well, you yeah. had written this person off at somehow. Yeah, and not that I had written them off, but they had not really been living, in my opinion. Like, if you looked at their addiction, mm. the quality of their life, right? they might as well have been dead 10 years ago. Maybe. You know, I mean, there's still some quality. I mean, even even people in, you know, really bad situations... You know, even though they're aware of their situation, there still is some joy to be found in life. I don't know that this person had much joy. So let me. Yeah. My best friend who I grew up with that he came from a home, parents divorced. Dad had drank himself to death when he mm. was probably nine years old. Mm. We had been friends. Shit. All through high school, after high school. But this guy is charismatic as cool of a person to be around when he was not binging right an attractive dude i mean even though i'd stopped seeing him up until the time of his death right of his overdose while he was out of jail in a halfway house yeah trying to get clean bought some shit had fentanyl in it that's horrible killed him Leaves behind two daughters who he hadn't seen in 10 years. Dang. Horrible. Followed in the footsteps of his father. Maybe not the same drug of choice, but the same addiction. His mother is the person whom I'm talking about. Yeah. So my friend passed away two years ago. Right. I've known, like I said, I've known him forever. Right. That means I knew his mom. Because sure. I used to go over to his house and play all the time. Yeah, that makes sense. His mom who had been addicted to pills for, I don't know, 20 years. Right. She had fibromyalgia. She had something. Yeah. She had something that caused her pain and her muscles and her bones to ache. Anyway. Yeah, it's horrible. The doctors started giving her prescription drugs. Right. And that's what she used to tolerate life. Right. And it became so isolating. That's all she did was sleep. I mean, she had no car at the end. She didn't drive. She never left her house. The only thing that I think she had was the fact that her son was alive and then right. he died. Yeah. So there she was, just existing. Right. So it's really sad, man. It's, it's super sad. The opioid epidemic is hitting everyone. I mean, it's definitely hit very close to me. Multiple different ways, multiple different people, friends that I grew up as well have passed away. You know, family members have had problems, significant problems. And I think it's something that ultimately affects everyone because all of us have access to these pharmaceutical drugs at some level, at some point, right? And then when you lose pharmacy access to these things, you seek out other methods because they are literally so addictive. And so people are going to go and find it in the secondary market, or they're going to use something like cocaine or heroin or something like that to replace it. And it could be laced with something as... And a lot of it is now laced with, with, with fent fentanyl. Which will kill you. Which will quick. kill you just like that. Nothing you can do about it. You just, I've heard it described by someone who actually it happened to them and they came back, described it to me as it was just like falling asleep. You know, I, it was like I, I was driving down the road, my body just, I couldn't move. And then I was just falling asleep and there was nothing I could do about it. And the next thing that they know, they woke up in the hospital. It's crazy. Now, my friend's mom didn't, I heard she OD'd. She took too much of something and it killed her. The only surviving family member is her daughter, who I do keep in touch with from time to time. Her daughter had not really allowed her children to really hang out with their grandmother because their grandmother was so messed up. Right. And so when I got the news of the passing. I was told about when the ceremony was going to be and if I was going to be able to go. And I, I instantly was like, no, I'm not going to go. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have time for it, I, which I probably could have made time. But, you know, I do have a family to think about and my time's precious here. But as weeks went by, I realized I didn't even call her daughter. Right. You know, say how sorry I was right. for how did you find out? My friend who kept in touch with the mom. Gotcha. Periodically. So the daughter. So it was a mutual friend. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah mutual friend. Told and you. 
told me and uh, like when it happened, like the day of. He's the one that told me about the service. He went. I didn't. And I meant to call. Right. And then I'd get distracted. And then I just forgot. Right. And then I received a text from her like weeks after. The daughter. The daughter asking me a question if, because it was coming up on her brother's anniversary of his death. Yeah. And uh, and as soon as I saw the text, I'm like, shoot, I'm sorry. I right. didn't call you. But then in the back of my mind, I'm thinking to myself, well, to me, she was basically dead already. Not saying she was, like, dead to me. The news of her dying. Yeah. And maybe I'm bad for feeling like this. It just was almost a relief. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds... <laughs> Thank God! I know. <laughs> Finally! <laughs> Party time, bro! <laughs> yes! Maybe, uh, no. The news of her dying, I almost felt like she's now at peace. Right. And it was almost, I don't, I don't want to say relief, like, I'm not relieved someone died, but I am kind of relieved that she's relieved. She's not in pain anymore. Right. You know, in, in some countries, like, for example, in Switzerland, they have a law in Switzerland. You can decide if you want to die. Like, you can go to the hospital. As a healthy person. Yeah, you can go to the hospital and say, this is my time. I mean, and they don't, they don't just bam, hit you with it. But more specifically, because there are a lot of legal things going on, but it is like a thing. If you're sick, if you have like a terminal illness or something to that effect, or, or you're like hurting, you're in a lot of pain, you don't want to take the drugs anymore, you just want to be at peace, you can legit go into a place and they will put an IV in your arm and your family comes and they see you and however you want to do it, you can do it. Can't do that in the U.S. You can do it to your dog. In the U.S., but you can't, you know, you can't do that. In the no, US. you can't, but I mean, to your point. But in Sweden, to your you point, can, or Switzerland? It's, uh, there are a number of places. Sweden may be another place. Recently, I read an article that was controversial about a man who did it in Switzerland because he was like a, a revered professor. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know what? I guess it's better than like throwing yourself off the bridge. It's, um... But the point is that pain and suffering is a part of all of our lives. Yeah, if you're living, you're going to experience All of us are pain going to experience pain and suffering. Some to lesser and greater degrees, but ultimately suffering is a part of life, just right. as death is. Ultimately, we say, oh, well, less suffering is better, right? Depends on who mm -hmm. you're asking. But suffering can also lead to greatness. All suffering in life is not the end of life suffering. You might be suffering through something right now. That's going to cause you to grow right. into a greater version of yourself. And without that hardship, you would never be able to reach that next goal or level that you have. Well, you, you yeah. know, you know, you can't even see what you can't see. But you have to believe there's something better on the other side. If you don't think it's ever going to get any better and you can't picture a place right. to help hope be the word. Yeah. To help pull you through. Right that time yeah. of misery or whatever it is you're going through, right? well, then that is maybe the end of the road for you. If there's no light at the end of the tunnel, then it's just dark. It's hard, I mean, because depression can be very dark, but depression can also lead you to revelations if you pay attention to it, if you research it again, if you have hope, if you want better. I think it's a very complex situation, obviously, because we all do deal with suffering of different kinds. But to your point about your friend's mom, I don't really think that you should feel, and it's just my opinion, but to me, I don't think that you should feel any type of shame or guilt around not responding to the news in a more compassionate way or changing your plans. And Because, dude, I know how busy you are, man. Like, you have three kids. You're a busy guy. To even have to define it to yourself just kind of is like, Okay, well, maybe this is the reason why I wasn't as compassionate. But the truth is, dude, we're all doing our best to live our own lives. And sometimes we don't show compassion to other people in the way that we wish we would have in the future. 
the good news is you can send that compassion to her now. You can have peace with yourself about, hey, I'm doing what I'm doing, and that was not shocking news to me. And that's okay. It's okay that that wasn't shocking news to you. You knew she was in a bad place. You're actually relieved. You're like, man, thank God her suffering is over. Right. And and that doesn't require your physical presence. It really doesn't even require that you communicate that to family members, although that's nice too, but it, there's no time stamp on it. Sometimes it takes time to process these things, which is what happened here. It took you time to process the news of her death. It really wasn't even until her daughter reached out to you that you began to process the news and your response to it. Well, I mean, I processed it the night that my friend told me it happened. I just, I wasn't shocked. There was no shock in the news. Yeah, you weren't surprised. She had been dead for years. Dude, when I was in high school, there was, um, I worked at this company where we built solar panel systems for houses. The guy that owned this company, his name's Al. Al also made what is now called a tiny house, but they were solar powered, okay? And you'd sell these things. And in the back parking lot, there was an example of one that he started renting out to this lady, this older lady. And you could tell like at some point, dude, when she was young, she was probably pretty fire. You know what I mean? But she was just old. She also was a drug addict. We all knew that. Dude, I went over there to fix some things a couple times. She even like propositioned me a couple times. Did you take her up on her proposition? Dude, I was honestly, I was grossed out by it. Can't fault her for asking. Hey, it doesn't hurt to ask. One day we came in and she was dead, dude, back there in the, in the tiny house. You know, she had OD'd. You know, we were all like, hey, it's really sad, but honestly, we weren't surprised. All she did was pop pills and drink. You know, she'd always come mumbling around drunk. But at the end of the day... Sometimes that kind of news is not surprising. No, it isn't. And you know what? I mean, I was like, you know, at least she's probably in a better place because the quality of life she was living, there was no quality to it. I can't speak on behalf of someone else, but when she was alive and her son was alive, she was of no positive influence to him. Right. She was of no positive influence to anyone around her. She didn't do anything. She stayed in a dark little apartment with right. no money, no car, dependent on 300 bucks a month. I right. mean, she didn't go out and enjoy life. She didn't go out and see nature. Right. She didn't take walks. She didn't. You're right. I can't speak for her. Maybe that was her heaven. Anytime you spoke with her. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. Oh, I'm in pain. I'm nothing positive. Right. To ever talk about. Well, then I guess we have to be grateful that she's moved on to the next plane, dude, that she's moved on to the next level. You know, may she rest in peace. Prayers to all her family. And I feel bad the way I responded to, you know, her daughter or didn't my lack of response. I've known this family so long. I should have called, sent my condolences without her having to text me. You can call and check up on her every month or two. That'll mean more than anything. Oh, I think she probably would say the same thing, that her mom's in a better place. I yeah. Mean, yeah, there's... But I mean, if you're concerned with the well-being of this family because you've known them for so long, well, you have an opportunity to check in with her every now and then and say, hey, uh, you know, I don't really need anything. I just was thinking about you. Just want to call and say, hey, how you doing? I'm here. I didn't need any NyQuil chicken. I'm cooking NyQuil chicken. Yeah. We're going to try it on the grill. You want to come over? You want to come over? It's called Sleepy Time Chicken. (laughs) (laughs) You think Bill Bill Cosby, that was his recipe? (laughs) Maybe so, dude. Uh, Like his Bill Cosby. Could night, have night been. chicken. Could have been 100%. I saw this chart and it was referencing the size of the manhood and how it actually matters or doesn't matter. Um, the interesting thing to me is this. In this particular depiction, it showed one size of woman's anatomy. And the size of someone's. And then varying sizes of male anatomy. Manhood. Right. So according to this chart, The vagina is the same size in every girl. I find that not true. But in males, there's an average penis, which only goes about halfway up. Uh, There's an above average, which goes about 80% up. And then there's the rare occurrence of vacation penis, (laughs) vacation dong. (laughs) And that's where the most pleasure is derived because that's the one that goes all the way up. Now, from personal experience, I know that this is not true. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> What part is not true? The part that all females are the same. That's not true. It's just not. So did you call the creator of Chart out no. and say that this is not the representation that makes you feel good? It's almost like if we were talking about does vagina size matter, if that was our subject of conversation, right? And you had one size of penis, with varying different sizes of vaginas fitting on that one size penis to state that the one that goes all the way down is the best one to have. But that is one size of penis and varying <laughs> sizes of vaginas. Well, we know that that's not true. There are varying sizes of penises and vaginas. Uh, yeah, varying true. sizes, as, as different as height, as different as race, age, and finger size. It is the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> it is. Big part a, of finding a mate. Is the puzzle pieces. Is do you're fitting the puzzle together. Yeah. Do you fit? Do you, do you fit together nicely? Is your hot dog in a giant hallway or is it in a nice tight corridor? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Are you dipping into a shot glass? Right. Are you dipping into a cup that's your size? Or, are you, or are you dipping into a big gulp? Well, yeah. <laughs> right. And basically right. what they're saying is that the vagina is the size of the big gulp. Right. And that anything other than something to fill that space is going to be <laughs> bad news for you, buddy. <laughs> At first, upon reading this article, I was devastated. You couldn't sleep that night. Then I realized the contrast <laughs> and the slanted unfairness of this feminist male degrading article, which posted, well, I don't know if it was male or female degrading. I mean, geez. Yeah. You trying to say that uh, every woman's got like a freaking big gulp, <laughs> like a wide mouth bass. <laughs> And it's ready. And to, it's just ready. To take down anything that you can throw at it. It can eat anything you can throw at it. From a freaking yeah. Jimmy John mini all the way to the extra itch 12 To the $5 long. foot long. Yeah, $5 foot long. Yeah, Subway, we're taking endorsements here. My point is that I'm not commenting on what people's preferences are. Obviously, people have a multitude of different preferences. And multitude of different sizes. Sexually. But I think in the end, the point being, I mean, for a guy, it doesn't really matter. As long as he's getting some, even if it's that one time... He's happy. Yeah. But if you are looking for the mate, the mate, right? your puzzle pieces, you would think you would want them to fit correctly. We discuss this. Is it boyfriend penis or is it vacation penis? Right. And this article made the supposition that vacation penis is, was the only one. Is the only, is, is the greatest of all. Well, damn it. I got news for you. Yeah. I've got baby penis. I found it interesting, too, and I think we might want to play this clip because I found a little conflicting information. Okay. Can we play that audio? This is a representation of my... I love a normal average size d Yeah. I'll say, it, I'll say it every day. Just that the guy... I love an average size <laughs> The guy's got a big d Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't it's think it matters. the motion just... of the ocean, not the... What's the rest of it? Size of the wave? I think that's it. Is it? Motion, yeah. Is it the motion? It's the not the size, the size of the wave. wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I, and it's just because it's like I have small boobs, so I don't want guys over here being like her tits were so small. It's like I can't control it, and I'm not about to pay ten grand for a boob job. So I'm like, I, I love a, a normal average size dick. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> just me too. Quit saying it over and over. <laughs> size of the boat, just, girls. It's like I have small. Um. Well, there you so, go. This is conflicting information to said article. Yeah, I like them. I think they're funny. I mean, look, nobody's saying it's ostracizing to dudes, yeah. right? I mean, I think you should write to the man who put out this diagram. The sad thing is this. There's no hope for the <laughs> short <laughs> man. <laughs> that's, that's the sad part yeah the real tragedy here is for those that have bds she went with average 
But she also kind of said, look, you can't control it. And if you don't know what to do with it, that doesn't matter either. I mean, honestly. Now, I've heard from some girls that say there are guys who don't know what to do with it. So you better have some motion for that ocean. You got to have that motion, big dog. So my son turned 10 this past weekend. That's amazing. I don't even realize how I didn't know about this. Uh, because you weren't here. I know, but I mean, I, I just feel like I should know when your son's birthday is. September 25th. Now I get it. The Big Ten. The Big Ten. Double digits. Wow. So for his birthday, yes, he said he wanted to have a party. Now right. we said, hey, bro, you can take some your friends to the Braves game. You can take like three or four friends. Right. Or you have a bunch of friends here, I'll pull down the projector right. screen, we'll light a fire, yeah. you and your buddies can watch the Braves game yes. on Friday night, and he's like, let's do that. And I said, well, if you do that, you could have like 18 to 20 people, Way you're going to maximize your presence a lot more yeah. than if you just invite four people. That's an easy of, choice. Right. That's what we did. Most of his baseball team came, a um, bunch of his friends in the neighborhood, some of his friends from school. Right. There was like 18 to 20 kids. Mm. Well, because some kids brought their siblings. I know most of these kids. Right. They're cool. Yeah. Until they weren't. Until they weren't. My wife had spent all day Friday morning preparing. Yeah. So my wife bought these little like individual like tin foil wraps for hot dogs to go in like you Dang. were at the ballpark like like a real ballpark game day experience a game day we here at the lee residence right yeah and had all these had popped not with microwave popcorn right had put the kernels in a pot popped all this damn popcorn <laughs> old-fashioned and, and filled these you know had these cardboard boxes that say popcorn right on them. let me tell you first off don't ever serve popcorn no let me say that again don't ever serve popcorn at a kid's party dude my 10 year old mind as soon as you said the individual servings of popcorn i thought about throwing popcorn at my buddy just tossing it at him dude you know what i'm saying just a big popcorn fight so first off kids had started off grabbing their their individual boxes of popcorn yeah. their hot dog sitting under the gazebo the phillies start spanking the braves the yeah. kids start throwing this greasy popcorn at my screen no then before you know it all the popcorn is like on the floor yeah. of my gazebo they're right. stepping all over just it just greasy grease everywhere buttered popcorn yeah right and i'm just like what the hell is going on yeah i see some little punk take his water bottle yeah. and throw it down my driveway bro do you do that at your house yeah pick it up was his dad there no so that was one of the drop-offs that was one of the drop-offs. Okay. That's Damn the problem man. with the drop-off strategy, bro, is your kid, wow. your kid well, might Well, there were like some parents were here. You know what I mean? And their kids were still acting like punks. Really? Yes. And so then the same kid I witnessed like five minutes later after he went and picked up his water bottle, unscrews the cap of his water bottle and just throws it on the floor of my garage. And I'm like, dude, you're going to go home if you don't start treating my house with respect. Wow. Like, just disrespectful. Yeah. Then... <laughs> and at this point i'm sitting there and i'm like okay this is out of hand all the kids are like kneeling down at my pond trying to touch my fish i'm right. like dude trying to pull the fish out no i don't know if they're trying to pull the fish out but what I'm was like, your wife doing at this point i mean was she, dude, she was, inside chilling she, uh, like no, not she, worried no, about there it? was no chill anywhere another thing that was going on is the amount of kids wrestling on the trampoline mm. to the point where i'm like guys one of you is gonna break something right Broke my trampoline. Metal poles. Oh, my gosh. Bent. Kai have a good birthday? He did, but he even started to get upset somewhat because he was kind of pissed. You know, he was hoping that everybody would sit around and watch the game. And then, yeah, that sucks. And then most of the kids were just. So he was kind of like acknowledging that this was like a little disrespectful and out of yeah, control. Yeah, yeah. And he was more wanting like, you know, it to be he was chill. Just like, dude. And, and when you got all that, maybe it was Three just or four kids at the Braves game sounds pretty good. It's funny because I was reminiscing on my childhood and uh, as I was in Tallahassee over the weekend at the beach and I thought about a birthday party that I went to when I was like 10 years old. It was when Nirvana first came out with Team Spirit. Dude, they changed. That Team was, Spirit. That was when the music landscape was changed forever. Bro. That's when grunge 
was birth. It was a nice party. It was a girl's birthday party. And Did there was play spin the bottle. No, I mean, Truth dude, so so we're all outside. It was an outdoor Swallow party. Swallow the cucumber. No, it was an outdoor party and there was a fire pit. And it was just a bunch of young kids hanging out around Kai's age, you know. And dude, it started raining and somebody turned on Nirvana teen uh, spirit oh, and just blasted it oh. and all the guys started just wrestling dude and moshing and just turned this backyard into a mud pit we got kicked out so you we were trashed, all covered in mud you dude. trashed his yard it was like woodstock it out would there. turn into a nice party to just like you had you know a good portion of the guys were just covered in mud soaking uh, wet but it was fun though you know the herd mentality but here's the thing the parents of the kids that broke the trampoline it was clear as day that the brother through the sister right. through the net bending the bars on the trampoline yeah when something like that happened you know if my kids broke something at your house yeah and it was a direct correlation to their rough housing yeah wouldn't you a apologize b offer to pay for it i mean, offer to fix it i think definitely that is more along the lines of that's how i would respond if you would expect that they would, then I would suppose that I would offer, I don't know how you repair a trampoline, but I might say something like, hey, I know my kids broke that. Can I kick you a 20 or something? You know, 20? What level of monetary compensation or otherwise would have satisfied your desire for retribution here? I think if the next morning I woke up and there was yeah. a new trampoline. A brand new trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> I am disheveled. I am disgusted that they did not offer to buy us a new trampoline. <laughs> no, actually, I think you probably could have gotten... I am beyond baffled. <laughs> I, I think you could... <laughs> I'm sure they sell poles. I'm sure you could buy new poles. Yeah, but am I, I am mean, I am I being am I being um, <laughs> trampoline poles, bro? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure you could buy parts. Am I expecting too much? I think that the frustration of the whole situation may have piled onto this thing that got broken. So you're saying my mind might be clouded? I'm just saying that you're always assuming a certain level of risk when you have a bunch of kids over like that. That something's going to get broken. Well, how about an apology? I mean, <laughs> how about an I'm sorry? You feel that you were just used? I feel like as if the parents came and took a shit on my lawn yeah. and just left and a just big steamy away. turd there. Right. I mean, it's kids being kids, dude. They're playing. They're being rowdy. I wouldn't be worried about a trampoline poles, dog. <laughs> I'd be glad the girl didn't break her damn arm. There's wouldn't all you? kinds of scary stories. Well, of I, I have an umbrella policy. These things. Well, it's a good damn thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should claim some trampoline damage. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Well, we had a, a 10 year old party that got out of control and they bent my trampoline <laughs> poles. And this is unacceptable. Someone at your party just two weeks ago wiped their ass, dude, or wiped their butthole yeah. on their sheets. After, Didn't apologize. After freaking you and yeah. then freaking your wife yeah. on the dance floor. Right. No, no apology there. None whatsoever. And then I've got like 18 little gremlins running yeah. around my house throwing greasy popcorn. Yeah, man. And smashing cake into my concrete pavers. You know, when you have a party, you're really assuming a lot of risk. That's a fact. I know that from, you know, throwing a lot of parties, obviously. I like to. I enjoy it. It's fun. But, dude crazy stuff happens and you know the truth is people are not going to respect your stuff like you respect your stuff and or they may not respect their stuff like you respect mm. your stuff so you expect more respect you know what i just had this thought that this might be karma yeah coming back it could for something that i did there's no doubt when i was younger oh god at some girl's house mm. let me recap for you real quick oh we were invited over to okay. this girl's house um i I st i'm friends with her on facebook right for some reason probably like 10 of us she wouldn't let us in her house mm. okay had to hang out in the garage and yep. smoke weed in the garage her parents weren't home yeah and i had to pee my buddy that was with me had to pee so we're sitting there and we look down and there's a litter box. Wow. Right there in her garage. Yeah. So my buddy starts to urinate. 
Yeah. In the litter box. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. She's inside. That is disgusting. <laughs> She's inside. He gets through peeing, and I'm like, well, I've got to pee too. Oh, no. And as I start. All this in an effort not to get wet with rain or something? No, we just were mad that yeah. she didn't let us inside. This to was use the retribution for inviting us over, right? But not letting us in, right? Not granting us the full Access. entry. Yeah. So as I start peeing, wouldn't you know, she opens up the door and is catches me peeing midstream. No way. <laughs> so the God. whole thing's your fault now. <laughs> Did you roll your buddy under the bus? <laughs> of course, I tried to. <laughs> <laughs> you're like it's not just me i swear to god and at this point it's like dude it's like oh. the, you can't even see the cat litter yeah, anymore it's beyond it's, unacceptable it's an inch of urine oh my god. floating on the top what what said she she kicked us out we have never laughed so hard do you feel like maybe the parents of the kids who broke the trampoline were laughing when they left Ha, 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 we just broke his trampoline. <laughs> Damn, Charlene. High five. The way you threw your brother through that trampoline made your daddy proud. <laughs> High five. Did you see that body slam that Billy Bob did to Charlene? <laughs> <laughs> Charlene, you're lucky not to break your damn arm. Needless to say, my son's parties will now be held off-site. Off-site. Not here. Mm. He can have a couple friends over. Right. But we will no longer entertain the crew. Right. Listen to the Man Fuse podcast for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you